Well, I was able to upload that last video clip, uh, the Walgreens Pharmacy Part 3, but, um, there was technical difficulties with the computer that I haven't encountered before, and I mean, I was able to get around it, but, you know, of course it makes me think someone messed with the computer, but anyway, um, the other issue is that I think the computer was trying to update itself, you know, the Windows updates, so it might have just gotten, like, stuck or something because it was trying to do that. So, I don't know, but, um, you know, sometimes I just need these Windows clips as, these video clips as an outlet. I just, um, you know, I wanted to just talk a little bit, um, it's somewhat related to the last video clips about the Walgreens thing, but, um, just, you know, I've said this a million times, but let me say it one more time. Um, not only do I feel like I'm in surveillance, under surveillance in my own apartment, but I feel like, you know, my phone's hacked. I feel like anywhere that I go, my enemies know where I am. You know, whether I'm just going to like a convenience store or I'm going to an appointment or I'm going to my parents or whatever. And because of that, I just feel like they play games wherever I go. You know, I think that they call people together through some kind of app or something, you know, almost like a Pokemon thing, like, go track down Pokemon, go track down Catherine, like, mess with her in the grocery store. Um, and I think sometimes they call people up on the phone, you know, like, I was in a car dealership last week trying to get my car fixed, my car door, and I swear to God, like, I think my enemies were calling the staff at the car dealership and like filling their head with garbage or like threatening them in some way to like uh pull some bullshit but um yeah so recently I've noticed that my enemy's like new favorite game to play when I go anywhere is they try to, like, keep me waiting. Um, whether it's a checkout line or whether it's in line to check in for a medical appointment or whether it's standing in line at the pharmacy or whether it's, you know, being in the car dealership waiting for the car to be repaired. They... Their new favorite game is to have me, like, stand there waiting or sit there waiting. And I'm saying this because it's happened, like, a bunch of times now, like, everywhere I go. Um, and I think the point is to have me get so frustrated from waiting that I start yelling something out, like, Hey, can I get some service over here? And then that turns into another uh, opportunity for my enemies to be like, see, she's entitled. She's a brat. She thinks she's like entitled to have people like wait on her. Like, I don't know. I thought that's what customer service was. I thought that's what customer service was. Like you see someone at the register and they're like looking down or they're looking to the side. They're looking everywhere but at you pretending they don't know you're there, but really they know you're there. Like it would be impossible for them to not know you're there. So I'm not really asking for special treatment. I'm just asking to not be treated like I'm invisible. Okay. Um, so yeah, like, you know, yeah, it's everywhere. Medical appointments, Stewart's, Cumberland Farms, uh, the car dealership, it's like everywhere. Like I just stand there 
and I see the person up at the desk, but they're like staring at their computer or they're on the phone or they're like looking off in some other direction, pretending not to see me. And you know what I mean? It's not like it's happened once or twice. It's like everywhere. And the same thing with like calling somewhere, like they'll put me on hold for like a really long time. And like, I just think it's all like a fucking another game by my enemies trying to fucking annoy me. And it is annoying because it's like, I'm not invisible. I'm not asking for special treatment. I'm just asking for like basic service that anyone would want. Um, You know, and sometimes I think to myself, well, maybe with the pandemic and the labor shortages, maybe employees in general are just feeling like they're not going to lose their job or get written up over bad customer service because employers are dealing with a labor shortage. You know, maybe they're all just feeling like, We don't have to do customer service anymore. Who are they going to replace us with? And I hope all those people lose their fucking jobs. I hope something happens where they just all fucking lose their jobs for their shitty attitude. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that. It's like, you know, just trying to get a basic need met. I'm not asking for special treatment. I'm just asking you to not treat me like invi- like I'm invisible. You know, sometimes I could be standing in line and there's like multiple people behind the counter. Like multiple people. And it's like, you know, one of them will be staring at a computer screen and one will be on the phone and one will just be like looking off into the distance. And it's like, it's, it's to the point where it's like ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I might just start being like, can anyone see me? <laughs> I didn't put on my invisibility cape today. It's like, you want me to fucking act mentally ill? I'll act mentally ill. You know, it won't be like me cursing or yelling or anything like that. I'll just say weird things. I'll just be like, am I invisible? I thought I left my invisibility cloak at home today. Um, You know, everything's just meant to like frustrate and just be like, oh, I can't get a basic need met, you know? Like, when I went to the car dealership last week, like, I was so grateful that they were able to fix the latch on my door that I haven't bitched about any of the other shit that went on when I was there. You know, I'm just so grateful that I only had to shell out $150. Um, I'm grateful it wasn't worse, you know. But just as an example, when I was there, like, first I went there, I went there on a Monday, I had gone to the grocery store, and I was having issues with the door, so I saw this Ford dealership, like, across from the grocery store, so I pulled in there, and I just said, you know, I wanted to see about what I can do about getting this addressed. And first of all, they made me stand right in front of the counter for like a really long time. Like there were two people behind the counter and like one of them was on the phone and one of them was like staring at their computer and they made me just like stand there for like an abnormally long time. It's not like there was like, you know, this line of people. So then finally, like, I got up to the counter and I said, you know, what can I do to get this looked at? And he was like, okay. First he tried me to get to go, get me to go to another dealership. And I was like, it's too far. Given the fact that the door isn't closing securely, I can't, like, get on the highway, you know. So he was like, okay, come first thing tomorrow morning. Dealership opens at 8 a.m. So I was like, okay, you know. You know, I think that he thought, oh, you know, she's not going to come that early because, you know, she's some kind of lazy bum bitch on disability. You know, those people on disability, they don't like to get up early. But no, I got up. I went there. I was there at 8 a.m. So 
they were like, okay, you know, we'll look at it. The waiting room is the other room. So I went in the waiting room and I was prepared to wait a long time. I'm like, shit, I might be here all day. So I was there. And then finally at 10 o'clock, this is after I was in the waiting room for two hours, I thought, you know what? I think I will go up to the front desk now. So I went up to the front desk and after a little while, the guy was like, oh, I was able to fix it, you know, something or other with the door latch. And I was just really, really grateful. You know, I don't know if he would have made me sit, th sit out there all day without telling me that he had already fixed it. But he was like, yeah, they're just finishing up the oil change. So I'm like, okay. So I went back in the waiting room. And then like 40 or 45 more minutes passed. You know, he said, oh, they're just finishing up. I mean, I've been to like a bunch of instant oil change places and it doesn't take that long. So I thought I'm going to go back up to the counter. So I went back in the other room. I went to the counter and... Again, like I'm just like standing there, like people are, you know, staring at computer screens or staring off in the distance or whatever. And then finally, this woman finally was like, oh, I'm just writing down some recommended, you know, like future repairs for you. I was like, okay. So then I just stood there because I thought if I go back in the waiting room again, they might leave me there for like another hour or so. So I'm like, I'm just going to stand here. Like I didn't stand there and stare at them. I kind of like turned around and looked at the wall. I don't know, looked at whatever was behind me on the wall. And then finally... You know, the woman, like, allowed me to come up to the little window, the counter, and she was like, you know, so I've written down, you know, these different things that you should think about getting done, you know, in the future. She's like, you really need four new tires, and you should get the air filters replaced, and the windshield wiper blades replaced, and she's like, I wrote out, you know, these different costs of different kinds of tires. You know, keep in mind, meanwhile, she hasn't told me how much I owe today for the door latch and the oil chain. She's just like going on about these future repairs. And then like she's showing me this stapled together sheets of paper. And at first glance, it looked like they were going to charge me $700 for like the door latch. But then she was like, no, no, this is the, you know, just the list of recommended repairs. And I was like, well, how much do I owe today? And then finally, she takes out this other sheet of paper and like finally reveals to me that it's like $150. And I was just so fucking relieved to hear that, that I was like, I'm just going to let all this other bullshit go. So, you know, finally I was allowed to pay and I left. But it's like, this is the kind of bullshit I encounter. Like, treat her like she's invisible. She's in the waiting room, out of sight, out of mind. We're not going to tell her when we're done. We'll see how long she waits and then we'll laugh about it. Oh, she waited two hours. Then we got her to wait another 45 minutes. You know, just a real knee slapper. Isn't that just really fucking funny? So, yeah, like, I just feel like I hate people. Like, I see strangers when I'm out, and I just feel this hostility. Like, you're probably a fucking asshole, too. That's how I feel. I feel like you're probably a fucking asshole, too. So... Yeah, I wish I were not a mean person, but it's been done to me through repeated bullying, through repeated bullshit, okay? This is how I am now. Um, you know, I don't want you to just fucking step on me. That's it. Could you just fucking stop stepping on me? Um, you know, and... 
Yeah, so, you know, and then there's all the games at the grocery store. Like, I can't make a grocery list, okay? I can't write stuff down on a grocery list because when I do, anywhere that I go to get the stuff on the list, I swear to God, my enemies get people to fucking block the fucking shelves. You know, again, make her wait. You go stand in front of the shelf. You know, like, I remember I was making these cookies for Christmas, and one of the items was, like, raspberry jam. And wouldn't you know, I go over to the jam section, and there's this woman, like, totally just, like, standing, blocking the whole jam section, like, slowly, like, you know, taking a bottle of jam down and, like, looking at it and then putting it back. So I could see that the jam I wanted was, like, I don't know, near the bottom shelf, and finally I was just like, excuse me, and I just reached over and got it. But that's the kind of shit that I encounter. Like today, I went to the grocery store, and I know my enemies knew that I was out of seltzer. I'm always drinking flavored seltzer, and like I go in the seltzer aisle, and there's like a million people, like on a Thursday afternoon, like in the seltzer aisle at an odd time of day, and there was like this empty cart, just like an empty abandoned cart, just like in the middle of the aisle. And you could like barely get down the aisle. And I accidentally like bumped someone with my cart. It was truly an accident. I didn't mean it, but it was like I was trying to get around someone else. And then I was, like, distracted, and I didn't see that there was this other person right there. But anyway, I got through it. I made it through the rain. I got the seltzer. I got a bag of cat food. You know, I made it through that. I got some paper towels, you know. Um, but, yeah, there's, like, constant daily frustration. Just, like, constant fucking daily frustration. Uh, my enemies, I mean, I just think they love it. They just want me to be, like, fucking annoyed all the time. Fucking annoyed and frustrated. And, you know, most of the time I don't mention it. Most of the time I don't even talk about it in these fucking clips. But I just thought I would devote a special clip to that bullshit. That fucking bullshit. Okay?